In this video, traders are going to look at how to invest in North Korea. Stay tuned. Hey guys, warm well, welcome to you. Okay, so maybe the title's a little bit misleading because we can't directly invest in North Korea. Now, let's put to one side any ethical things, any all this kind of whether it's a good investment or not. The idea is that generally people are thinking if North Korea kind of goes through a bit of a change and maybe kind of sees the light, it's not so aggressive uh, with its nuclear ambitions and all this kind of stuff, and let's not get too political here, but it could be one of the fewer countries that has potential for massive growth. There's a reasonable population there, and if they kind of sort things out and there's a lot more foreign investment gets put into it for whatever reason, again, you know, who knows how this will work or what time frame or if at all, there could be opportunity for um, some good returns. So whilst we can't invest directly in North Korea and that might not be, even if that opens up, that might be a little bit too risky for many people. There are ways that we could potentially look to benefit from companies that might uh, start to become a bit more profitable having some exposure in North Korea. Now, the obvious one to me is looking at South Korea, right? I'm not familiar with South Korea, I've never been there, um, but it would make sense that if they kind of open up to investment, if they become a little bit more relaxed and a little bit more free and seeing some sort of foreign money coming in, some of these bigger companies in South Korea are going to benefit because they're well-placed geographically, they're well-placed kind of, um, you know, socially, et cetera, just to go over and do the jobs that need to be done. So we're thinking things like, you know, infrastructure improvements, IT improvements, technology improvements, um, all this kind of stuff that comes from a country that um, is way behind in terms of uh, the, the way it's positioned compared to some of the other countries, uh, its neighbors and over in the West, wherever you want to look at it. So how would you play it? So the idea is you could either look and scan through and say, you know what, I'm going to pick out some of the construction companies. I think that they will, kind of the ones that are good at building bridges and building roads and building infrastructure will benefit from that. So maybe it's some South Korean companies like that, or perhaps they're going to not even look at that. It's going to skip straight to kind of healthcare. Perhaps it's going to skip straight to um, information technology or technology. And healthcare is actually uh, kind of a, a good one, I think, because one of the premises of, or one of the um, caveats, if you like, of um, foreign investment might well be that, hey, healthcare has got to be up to scratch. You know, we've got to kind of invest and we're building some hospitals, but having some more effective healthcare in for your people, ability to feed your people better, uh, this kind of stuff. Anyway. So one of the ETFs for South Korea is EWJ. So EWJ, South Korean ETF. Um, at the moment, as I'm, as I'm writing this, at 58 bucks, so it's down a little bit. It's um, you know it's something that's worth looking at. Look at the constituents of that in a moment. We've also got FXI, obviously China as well, very well positioned um, for North Korea investment. Now some of the companies in China may well be dealing with their own kind of expansion, but some of them uh, may well also be well positioned. And China has probably got the money to invest in North Korea. Uh, now whether or not, again, not getting too political, whether or not uh, the US likes that from a perspective of um, China having a big handle on North Korea and then being very close to South Korea, which is one of the allies, who knows, but they could be uh, one to look at. The other one, of course, is Japan. Uh, Japan are close enough, again, to be, uh, to be useful if needed. So let's look at some of the constituents here, guys, over and I'll bring this into the window. I'm on the iShares, which is the um, um, Korean ETF or the South Korean ETF. And I just want to scroll straight down to this constituent. So let's have a little quick look at the um, uh, premium, 0.81%. Uh, anything else that's worth looking at, which bring it in a little bit more. I'm more interested to see, uh, that's at the fees. The fees look reasonable at 0.62%. That's not excessive, 0.6% um, of September 30th, 2008. Anyway, what I'm interested in is the holdings, top 10 holdings. That's what we're, that's the kind of stuff that's gonna benefit. So if you're gonna invest in this, how would it kind of fit in with the North Korean thesis? So Samsung Electronics makes perfect sense. Um, big mobile phones are one of the things they do, but also plenty of other stuff. A big weighting that 20, 21%, uh, 21.5% to be precise, 
weighting. So it's reasonably big in that ETF. So you've got a big kind of exposure to Samsung. Then we've got another IT company there. Uh, Hynix, then we've got a financial company, materials company, uh, consumer discretionary Hyundai Motors, that's something as well. And if the infrastructure builds up, then they may well have an appetite uh, for vehicles. Um, if, you know, there is an argument to say perhaps they're not ready for that yet. Are they earning enough money uh, to, as uh, the majority of people earning enough money, is there a middle class there? Don't know enough about it to comment on that, but that's something to consider um, from an investment perspective. If they've got the money and they've got the kind of money to spend on a vehicle, then perhaps there will be a big boom in that industry and the right vehicle at the right, pl at the right price uh, for them may well work. Healthcare there, 2.45% uh, sell tree on. Uh, that's one of one of the healthcare's in there. Can't see another one. Another financial. Um, then we've got a USD cash. Interesting that that's in there. Uh, some communication and materials. So that could be worth looking at. Maybe Samsung's slightly overweight on that. If you're thinking, unless you believe Samsung's got a good kind of reason to be in there, that might not be the one for you. But at least you can get a starting point, right? So you either buy an ETF and you go, yeah, okay, I'm gonna buy an ETF. and I'm gonna kind of, you know, use that as a kind of proxy for a North Korean play. And of course, if South Korea does all right, you're still okay anyway. It's not a pure North Korean play. Or you kind of look and say, well, you know, what would they benefit from and which companies would I buy and buy yourself your own, make your own ETF up and buy your own basket of companies and use the ETF as a kind of starting point to do your own research. You go, okay, uh, they obviously think this company's worth having in the ETF. Let me have a look and see you know, your own criteria for investing. And then you kind of put that in your own basket of stock. So this is super, super early. I recognize that. Um, it's just a thought. And again, appreciate what your thoughts are in the comment section below, guys. Is, is there something that comes to mind, some sort of currency you think would benefit from it? Is there a commodity um, that may well be a proxy play for a, a kind of North Korean a boom? Uh, what other companies spring to mind for you? Uh, other countries as well that could benefit from that? Um, yeah, and I say recognize this is ridiculously early. There's nothing on the cards that suggests this is gonna happen, but it pays to be prepared. You know, if you've got a kind of plan of action that if something happens and investment starts to flow in and you want to allocate capital, you know what you're going to do. You can kind of got a good starting point to work from. So anyway, guys, investing in North Korea, some ideas and some options. Take care. Bye-bye.